Okay, in this section, we're going to talk about graphs of the other trig functions besides sine and cosine. Let's start with tangent. Tangent is the ratio of the y-coordinate on the unit circle divided by the x-coordinate. So that, that would tell you that the tangent would be positive in the first quadrant, negative in the second. And see, it becomes positive again in quadrant 3 and then negative in quadrant 4. Uh, we're going to actually show that the period of the tangent function is pi. It's not 2 pi. Anyway, let's, uh, let's plot some points. T is 0, it's going to be 0 over 1, which is 0. Whoops. 0 over 1, which is 0. At pi over 4, it's radical 2 over 2 divided by radical 2 over 2, isn't that just 1? At um, pi over 3, it's radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, so it'd be radical 3. Pi over 2, it's, uh-oh, it's undefined, isn't it? It's going to be undefined whenever the x-coordinate is 0, so it, it's going to be undefined um, at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2, not defined. Well, we're going to show it has a, actually a vertical asymptote at those two places. Okay, 2 pi over 3 is over here. The tangent is negative. It's going to be negative radical 3, right? And at 3 pi over 4, the tangent is negative 1. At pi, the tangent is 0. 5 pi over 4, remember you're positive again in quadrant 3, so it would be a 1. And then in quadrant 4, 7 pi over 4, it's going to be negative 1. And then when you get back to 2 pi, the tangent is 0. Okay, here's what's going on. Let me show you what's going on with the tangent function as you go around the circle. See if you can follow this. It's really important. All right, t equals 0. The tangent's 0, right? Right here. And as you move around the unit circle, see how the y-coordinate's getting bigger and the x-coordinate's getting smaller? You get to pi over 4 and the tangent's 1. And again, look very, very closely. The y-coordinate's getting close to 1. The x-coordinate's getting close to 0. It turns out when the denominator gets close to 0, the top gets close to 1 the thing is blowing up. It's getting close to positive infinity. You've got a vertical asymptote. Now as soon as you pass pi over 2, all of a sudden, same situation except the x is now negative. So if you just pass pi over 2, you're actually coming back from negative infinity. If the y coordinate is close to 1, the x coordinate is close to 0, but it's negative, you're coming back from negative infinity. And now we're at negative 1, now we're at 0. Now remember in quadrant 3 it starts over, okay, so the tangent's 0. Now the tangent's positive. We get down to uh, 5 pi over 4, tangent's 1. As you get close to 3 pi over 2, now notice x and y are both negative. x is getting close to 0, y is getting close to negative 1. So that ratio is getting close to positive infinity. But as soon as you pass 3 pi over 2, you're in the fourth quadrant. x is, x is positive, y is, y is negative. So it's coming back from negative infinity here, back to negative 1, and back to 0. Okay? All right, well, that, that, that's, that's the story. Let's, let's, take, let's get it a, di a different way now. Let's actually plot, let's actually graph the the tangent function. Uh, we know the um, vertical asymptotes are going to be at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, all odd multiples of pi over 2, right? We would say pi over 2 plus n pi, where n is any integer, right? Okay, here, here's how we're going to plot it. We're going we're to graph it just like what I was showing before. Look, at, at t equals 0, you start, and, and the tangent of 0 is 0. If you're in the first quadrant, Tangent is getting bigger, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1, but as you get close to pi over 2, the tangent goes to uh, positive infinity. As soon as you pass pi over 2, though, since x becomes negative, the tangent comes back from negative infinity, and then as you get close to 0, now at uh, pi, the tangent is 0, but now we're in uh, quadrant 3, remember the tangent is positive again, and as you get close to 3 pi over 2, the, the tangent is going to positive infinity, and as soon as you pass 3 pi over 2 in the fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative, so you're coming back from negative infinity, it looks like that. And if you were to continue on, the graph looks like this. Furthermore, the tangent is an odd function, which means uh, it's symmetric with respect to the origin. It's, it's odd because it's the ratio of an odd function divided by an even function. It's odd. So what that says is whatever the graph does one side of the y-axis, it does the opposite on the other. The graph looks like this. There it is. There, there's a graph of tangent. Now, the, um, the important characteristics, the domain is x cannot equal pi over 2 plus n pi. Just, just remember, uh, the, the cosine or the x value can't be zero. So think about what, what values of t, or in this case x, make, make the, the denominator zero. Range is all real numbers, the period's pi, and it's symmetric with respect to the origin. Okay, get ready, because here comes the graph of cosecant of x. Remember, it's the reciprocal of the sine. So it is the reciprocal of the y-coordinate as you pass by, as you move around the unit circle. It's the reciprocal of the y-coordinate. So the first question might be, well, where is it undefined? And it turns out, Notice the, the, the cosecant is going to be undefined um, precisely where the y-coordinate is 0. So it's going to be undefined at 0 and at pi 
and at 2 pi, not, not defined. Okay, so to move around the unit circle, remember, we're just talking about the reciprocal of the y-coordinate, right? We're not looking at the x-coordinate here. Pi over 4, it would be the reciprocal of radical 2 over 2, which is, which is um, 2 over radical 2. I think it could be written as radical 2. Pi over 3, uh, you could rationalize it, but I'm not going to. It's going to be 2 divided by square root of 3. Pi over 2, it's going to be 1 over 1, which is 1. Now remember, it's going to be, let's take a look at this. It's going to be positive in the first and second quadrant, right? Cosecant, it's going to be negative in the third and fourth. So that, that says it's going to take a whole period. It's going to take 2 pi before it starts to repeat. So the periods here, it's not going to be pi. It's going to be 2 pi. Anyway, um, at 2 pi over 3 over here is the reciprocal of the y-coordinate, so it's still 2 over square root of 3. At 3 pi over 4, it's going to be uh, radical 2. And then you move into the third quadrant. Remember, in the third and fourth quadrant, it's negative. So this would be um, at uh, 5 pi over 4, it's going to be negative square root of 2. 3 pi over 2, it's going to be negative 1. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. At 7 pi over 4, uh, it's still going to be um, negative, negative square root of 2. All right, so uh, we're going to use a different way to graph uh, this close secant. We're going to actually use the graph of the sine function and take the reciprocal of the y-coordinates to graph the cosecant function. Okay, so this is the graph of sine function right here. Watch. Uh, first, before I do that, let's see. It's not defined in any of the integer multiples of pi. So let's go ahead and uh, note that. Those places where the vertical asymptotes are going to rest, aren't they? All right, so here we go. We're going to take the reciprocal of the um, y-coordinates on the sine graph. So we start off at 0. Now notice, the, the, as, as, as t gets to be a little bit greater than 0, the, the, the y-coordinates are close to 0. So if you're close to 0, the reciprocal of those are going to go, get close to positive infinity, right? Now, uh, at pi over 2, the reciprocal of 1 is 1, so it actually meets at pi over 2. And then as, as the t-values get close, or the x-values get, 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 um, get close to pi, the reciprocal, uh, um, uh, the y-value is getting close to zero, so the reciprocal of those is going to get close to positive infinity. If you're a little bit bigger than pi, notice the, the, the y-coordinates are close to zero, but they're negative. So when you take the, the reciprocals, it's going to be close to negative infinity. The uh, cosecant function intersects at negative one at three pi over two. But as you get close to two pi, the y-coordinates are getting close to zero, but they're negative. The reciprocal of sine would get close to negative infinity. So we're, we're literally taking the reciprocal of the y-coordinates on the sine graph. Anyway, if you were to continue like this, you get one over here, and then uh, the, the sine function is odd, therefore the reciprocal of it is um, odd, which means it, it, the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin, which means whatever the graph does on one side, it does the opposite on the other. So it would look like this, it would look like this, and so on. That's the graph of the cosecant function. Anyway, so properties. Well, the domain is wherever the sine equals zero, so it would be x cannot equal n pi, where n is an integer. The range, well, the range is a y, this is interesting, since you're taking the reciprocal of the y-coordinates on sine, uh, y is either going to be greater than or equal to 1, or less than or equal to negative 1. And this is a nice, fancy way to say that. The absolute value of y is greater than or equal to 1, okay? Again, that's the same thing as saying y is greater than or equal to 1, or y is less than or equal to negative 1. Period's 2 pi, and it's symmetric with respect to the origin. It's an odd function. Okay, let's talk about secant. Secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function. So let's start off by looking at where would secant not be defined? It's whenever the x-coordinate is 0, right? So that, that's going to occur at um, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, right? Not defined at pi over 2, not defined at 3 pi over 2. Okay, now let's see, furthermore, um, we're taking the reciprocal of the x-coordinate. So look, look at what's going on. The, 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 the secant's going to be positive in the first, negative in the second, negative in the third, positive in the fourth. You see it's going to take an entire 2 pi before it starts to repeat. So the, the period of secant's also going to be 2 pi, it looks like. Okay, so here we're just focusing on the x-coordinate. It's the reciprocal of the x-coordinate. So when t is 0, the x-coordinate's 1, so the reciprocal's also 1. Pi over 4, let's see, the reciprocal of radical 2 over 2 is 2 over radical 2, which can be rationalized. Pi over 3, the reciprocal of 1 half is uh, 2. Not defined at pi over 2. Second quadrant, we're negative now, right? 2 pi over 3, 
it's going to be um, negative 2. 3 pi over 4, it's going to be, uh, what, negative um, radical 2. At pi, the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1, right? Now we're, we're going to be um, uh, still negative in the third quadrant, right? 5 pi over 4 is going to be negative radical 2. And then in the fourth quadrant, we finally get back to positive. At 7 pi over 4, it's going to be radical 2. And then at 2 pi, it's going to be 1. We're going to use the same technique to graph the secant as we did for the um, cosecant. We're going to take a look at the cosine function here. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to um, take the reciprocal of the y-coordinates on the cosine function, just, just like we did with the, um, just like we did with the uh, co cosecant and the sine function. First of all, the bad places are at the uh, odd multiples of pi over 2. So let's see. One here. Whoops. Uh, let's see. One here. One here. 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 And here. Okay, so we're going to take the reciprocal of the y coordinates on the cosine function. Here we go. Now you start off um, at 0, uh, the uh, the, the y-coordinate is 1, so the, 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 the secant and the cosecant, uh, the, co the cosine and the secant uh, um, intersect there. But notice, uh, uh, on the cosine function, as you get, you get close to pi over 2, the cosine is getting close to 0, the y-coordinates, so the reciprocals are going to get close to positive infinity. And when you're on the other side of pi over 2, the y-coordinates of cosine are close to 0, but they're negative, so when you take the reciprocal, it's going to get close to negative infinity. Uh, the, cos the, 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 the secant and the cosine intersect, at, um, at pi, and then at, at 3 pi over 2, notice the, the y values on cosine are getting close to 0, but they're negative, so the reciprocals are going to get close to negative infinity. And as you get, as you, if you're greater than, if you're in the fourth quadrant now, uh, you're, you're greater than 3 pi over 2, the y coordinates on cosine are, are getting close to 0, but they're negative, so uh, the reciprocals will be getting close to positive infinity. Anyway, if you were to continue like this, you get a graph that looks kind of like this, doesn't it? And furthermore, since the cosine is even, so is the secant. So whatever, the, so the graph is symmetric with respect to the uh, y-axis. So it does the same thing on the other side of the y-axis. Anyway, you get something like this. Okay, let's see. So summarizing then, the uh, the domain would be a set of all x uh, such that x can equal pi over two plus n pi, where n is any integer. The range are all y values whose absolute value is more than one. Period is 2 pi, and it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis even function. Now, I forgot to do the cotangent. The cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, okay? So I'll let you guys do that on your own. Take, take the tangent function that we just showed and take the reciprocal of the y-coordinates and see if you can come up with the cotangent. All right, we're done here. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.